Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Mama Genius Podcast slash festival today because we're doing it all. All these speakers have been utterly amazing. I have yet another one for you. Women can do it. They are powerful beyond measure and make the relationship that they want. Jill Cruz is about to come on and I can't wait to bring her to you guys. Welcome to Mama Genius Pub Podcast, where we support moms with big dreams from entrepreneurship to personal aspirations. I'm your host, Michelle Kaiser, and I'm here to help you unlock your potential in all areas of life. Join us as we explore strategies for thriving in motherhood while pursuing the dreams, the key to actually unlocking your genius. Subscribe now and embark on a journey to realize your fullest potential. And we're back. So Jola is a certified relationship coach who's about five years ago was on the brink of divorce and has since completely turned her relationship around. She now coaches women so they can save their relationships, whether her husband is on board or not. That is amazing. And best of all, she helps women find themselves and their happiness with their current relationships so they don't have to leave their husbands. If they are single, she helps you remove the fear of dating and prepares you with the skills and tools to be successful and find the man of your dreams. She lives in Southern California with her husband and three kids. When she's not working, she enjoys time with her family, park tours, classes, and modeling. I love that. Thank you, Jola, for coming on today. I'm so excited to hear your topic and empower us all to be in the relationships we are in. Thank you, Michelle. Sorry, Yolo. <laughs> It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. I'm sorry about that. I forgot to ask your name before I came on, and I normally do that. It was all the, the rebooting of the computer, but you know what? We roll through it, and Yola, I'm so excited to have you. How is the festival going for you? It's going great. So many wonderful speakers, just moms empowered in everything that I do. And it's amazing to learn on the different topics that I can talk about. And, and I am so excited to <laughs> dive into your topic because we need to talk about the relationships there as well. We got a little bit in your bio about your why behind it, but I'd love to hear your story of how you got into this. About five years ago, I, I almost divorced my husband. Fortunately, I learned how to save it. And it was truly a saving grace because I come from a lineage of unhappy marriages in my family, starting from grandparents who were married for 70 years. You would say, what are you talking about? They were married for 70 years. Well, they were so unhappy together that they lived in separate rooms on two separate floors, had two separate kitchens and 10 kids out of the 10, only one has a good marriage now. And that's my mom because I helped her out. So we carry that from generation to generations. If anyone is wondering, should I work on this marriage? Is it worthwhile? Should I fix it? It's always worthwhile. Even if you end up splitting up, it's still worthwhile to heal that relationship. So we don't carry that to the next relationship or pass it on to our children. I love this because you talked about the generationalness. Like you don't even think about that, but it's so true because you see that pattern and you emulate it. I love how you say you heal the relationship, no matter where you end up going with that relationship, whether, whether you stay together or not, but, and especially a lot of these cases, we have kids involved. So even if you end up divorcing, having a better co-parenting relationship could be at, from this as well. I'm just so enamored by what you do and so inspired. I'd love for you to break down some of those strategies and how we do this. So how do we do this? We change how we are, not who we are, but how we are in this world. We learn how to communicate in better ways. The person we are talking to doesn't have to get offended because typically what happens, there is an action, there's a reaction. But if that reaction could be different, let's say if the spouse comes home and he says something and it always hurts my feelings, we play the pattern over and over. The Gutman University said that 69% of the arguments will never get resolved in a, in a marriage. 69% of them. So we keep fighting over the same things every single day and just never changes. So what do we do with that? Do we just let go or do we actually learn how to communicate better with grace so we don't have to repeat those same arguments? Because if we don't, it's never going to get solved. What's the point of fighting over that? We'll just say with my husband, we agree to disagree. Because we're not always on the same page when we raise children. That brings a lot of questions and different perspectives. And I usually say that God gives a child two parents for a reason. I come from a single parent family. My mom was divorced. So I know that having that second perspective, I value it tremendously because I never had that. Now my kids can have a perspective from the mom who can be more cuddly. And then they have a perspective from the dad who says, hey, get your butt up and get going. That's necessary too. But if one person squishes the style of the other, then the kids are missing out. 
I'm taking that in right now. I'm still stuck on the 69%, but that's so true of having the same arguments over and over. You just, you don't, so you're going to get frustrated and, and not want any part of it because it just keeps circulating. 69% of our arguments are never resolved and they're just repeating themselves. Yeah. Insane. Same. Where do we go next? Because my mouth is dropping right now. <laughs> Where do we go next? We go next to appreciating the differences. I know we are in a stage and age right now where everyone is the same. Genders don't matter and things like that. It does matter. Masculine and feminine energy matters. Because if a husband and a wife are in a goal-oriented mindset, which is very common now, and they lose the ability to communicate at home because masculine and masculine is going to clash together. But anytime we have a masculine and we have feminine, they bond together. So mm -hmm. we as women have forgotten to build capacity, which I have done for 10 years. I have forgotten how to be a woman, how to tap into my feminine. The feminine means the soft, uh, loving, caring. It's the glue of the family. If there's no glue, the family falls apart because we're chasing dreams. We're going after our businesses, being first, the best, our kids being the best at everything. But where is the love? Where is the connection? That's what takes a back seat. Our world became so masculine that women have become masculine. But as women, we have businesses and be feminine and have it all from a much easier place, more of that kind of flow place versus efforting all the time, because the goals, 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 that's a masculine energy. And when we are in that for too long, we actually can suffer from adrenal burnout because it's not good for women to be driving all the time. We need the time more than men to actually step back, take a bath, go for a walk, cuddle with the kids, with pets. Whatever that might be, that brings us to that soft part of us. I'm taking that in right now because the way you describe it, because on one of the podcasts yesterday, they were talking about, which I never really thought about, motherhood is so masculine because of all the doing and the things we put in it. You're re-emphasizing bringing back that feminine that some, a lot of us have lost and we don't necessarily even recognize it. And I love how you said bringing back the softness and the cuddling and, and the things that we need to do to take that time and not be like, I got to do, 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 and to really merge that together. And just that's so eye-opening. And so I love how you go from, so what are some ideas to spend more time with the feminine that, that you can offer um, to our moms out there? Yeah, usually what I go through is going back to the roots. When we think about uh, our beginning, when we were children, some of us have really traumatic childhoods, right? But there are also moments in time when we truly are free to explore and, and just have fun. And just being, like you mentioned, it's, it's almost looking into that and seeing what did I used to like to do? When I had to reconnect with my feminine, I had no idea how to do it to, to start because I was very masculine and I'm a very feminine woman. So imagine when you are acting in a role that it's not your role, it just, it's very, very difficult. It's, if you have an accountant, be a salesperson. They right. can do it, but they're going to be exhausted. But in their own accounting space, they feel great. The same for us, for women. If we can be more in that feminine state, how do we bring that up? Looking back into childhood, what did I used to like to do? I used to like to paint and dance. And maybe I used to like martial arts. The word you were trying to pronounce, parkour. Parkour, it's rooted from my childhood because I used to love martial arts and it became very serious. Especially when we become moms, we're very goal-oriented, but actually the kids need more fun. They need a relationship. They don't need a parent to just keep telling them, do this, do that. It's more about what do you need? How are you doing today? How were your friendships today at school? Is there something you want to talk about? Who are you as a person? Not this little thing that I'm taking care of, but like, who are you as a person? How do I foster that relationship with you? The same with the spouse and the same with the child instead of just barking orders. If we go into a female, if she goes into the masculine, she becomes controlling and she tells everyone what to do. And she's like, do this, do this, like change the diaper. You don't know how to change the diaper. Load the dishes this. We are telling them what to do instead of being collaborating and being partners. We become like this mother, not only to our children, but we can become a mother to our spouses as well. I teach women how to stop being a mother and become a lover again. <laughs> On that note, we'll be back in just a moment to dive straight into that one. Attention mompreneurs. Do you feel like you're constantly juggling the responsibilities without a moment to yourself? It's time to pause and reflect with our Mama Genius Quiz. Tailored for busy mamas like you, this quiz will help you identify what's blocking your path and inspire you to harness your unique strengths. 
transform how you manage life and business, find your rhythm, and ignite your joy. Visit MamaGeniusHub.com today to discover your Mama Genius. How do we let go of the mothering to our husbands and become more of that lover again? It is becoming more feminine, like we talked about, but it's speaking in a different voice. That's where it starts for me. How am I speaking to my spouse? If you were to, to be an observer and see how we are speaking to our spouses, many times you would notice that we're telling them what to do, where to go. We, we manage their schedules. We manage their laundry. We manage all those things. So, and it just becomes almost like a transaction. Mm -hmm. It becomes like two people managing a third person or a fourth person like a child. That's why many times when I hear women saying, I have four children, when they have really three children and a husband, I cringe because, ouch, I used to be the same way. <laughs> I used to be the same way. That's why it kind of hurts so much because if we treat our spouse like a child, who wants to be intimate with a child? It's regaining that trust that he can do the things he used to do before we got married. They were very capable. They were capable to get dressed, shop for their clothes, to do laundry and cook their meals. But suddenly when we get married, the first thing a woman does, she looks, how can I change this man? How can I make him better? So we marry for a person who they are, not the person they're going to become. If we can just marry that person for exactly who they are right now, not the possibility, not the options, because then disappointment sets in. Because if they don't become the way we imagine them to be, now we are disappointed. Because so true. Yeah. I'm just sitting with that one because you have these dreams of what life's going to be like, but you're not looking at what's actually right in front of you, who they actually are. It's more like what you picture it to be like. Yeah. I remember I used to want to change my husband all the time. When I stopped changing him, when I started accepting, as I always say, acceptance always comes first. It's the same with children. It's the same with your spouse. When we can accept them just as they are, However imperfect, we can love them much more. If we want to change anything, it comes with openness versus being closed off. If I come at my child and say, you need to change this, you need to change that, they're not going to change. But if I say to my daughter, I just love you just the way you are, whether you get A's or B's or C's, I just love you doing the same thing with the spouse. It's giving that grace to the spouse. It's much easier to give it to the children, that unconditional love. But when we can have that unconditional love for our spouse, they feel it. How freeing is that to be in a relationship when we, you can do no wrong, when you don't get in trouble because you overspent money or you made a mistake. If he's free to make mistakes, guess who can make mistakes too? I can make mistakes. Now we're accepting each other, however imperfect, but we're together in this instead of judging each other. That judgment is the killer, I, I feel mm -hmm. like. Because that's always that. But, but then I think when you feel like you're going to be judged by the spouse, you're judging yourself even deeper yes. because you're afraid of that response that may or may not come. Correct. Right. We tell ourselves in, that, in our heads. And I love how you're giving that acceptance of who they are and, and really looking at that. So what are ways we can start to see that person? So we, we looked at them in a certain way, but are, are there ways to start looking at that person more directly or it helps us define that? Absolutely. It's the way you look at things. When you change the way you look at things, things change. Right. Uh, very simple example. We usually complain about men that they don't change the toilet paper roll, that they leave it in a rack, which my husband does notoriously. We complain about the socks next to the bed or on the floor, or we complain about the clothes next to the hamper and not inside of it. Those three things, right? Very common, very common. And they will never change. <laughs> That's the 69%. <laughs> so I can look at those things and I can say, oh my gosh, I can't believe he's such a slob. Why didn't he change the toilet paper roll? Or I can say he's single focused. Therefore, when he is doing one thing, he's not focusing on the other thing. And then I can say, thank you, God, for having a man in the house. So every time now I go to the bathroom and I see the toilet paper roll, I smile. Instead of being angry, I actually smile and say, thank you, God. And I actually had a conversation about it with my husband. And I said, it's okay. It doesn't bother me. I actually enjoy it. I embrace it. So the things that really set you off and bother you and will never change, if you can learn how to embrace them and accept them, it's the same situation. He hasn't changed, but I changed how I look at that. How I, I look at that. That's so, it's, it's so true. The way we look at it, the way we respond to that situation, the same thing when our kids throw a tantrum, when we're in that space to, to handle it, we're able to, to nurture them other times without yelling back, but then if we're not. And so the same thing with the spouse. So when you're looking over at what he, he or she is doing 
And then just with the toy part, that was such a perfect example of just the way you looked at and changed your perspective, even though hit what he did hasn't changed at all, but it is the way what we put on ourselves. You can either be angry about it or think for it. Absolutely. And one of the ladies in my class actually said, I wonder how many things the men have that we don't talk about. See, we talk about it all the time, but they don't many times. They don't come and say, oh, my wife was nagging at me. Oh, my wife was doing this. We are much more likely to be vocal about stuff like that. So we do things like that too. And they accept it, right? So why not go the other way? That's so true. When you put it in perspective like that, you're right. They're like, well, I, I know you do those things and, and they don't necessarily vocalize it and stuff, but we do have that habit of really vocalizing that so much. I love that. It's just so much insight. I'm like, I'm, I'm on page two of my notes right now. You've taken me over to the next page. <laughs> That's fantastic. What is your suggestion though, for, for a woman who just does like, just feel so lost and not sure what to do. Where's the first place that she should start? The first place is resourcing yourself. I, I don't know if you had speakers before talking about self-care, but with my program, the very basic thing that we go over first and foremost is self-care and making sure that we are resourced. If you, I'm exhausted and at my wit's end and I see that toilet paper roll, I'm probably going to flip out. But if I'm resourced, if I have given myself time, if I was able to communicate with my spouse so we can share responsibilities, if I was able to get support or share rides with my friends, I don't have to drive my kids back and forth if I have a nanny and more time for myself to get my nails done, get my massage done, do my meditation, go for a run. If I can do those things, I have more respect and resources. When the child throws a temper tantrum, if I'm resourced, I'm much more likely to hold space for that child. But if I'm really exhausted, we are not the best for our children. Our current setup of our society is not very supportive of family life because we used to live in villages, right? We used to be in communities and it takes a village to raise a child. But now we move away. Like I'm from Poland. I live in the States. We have no family around. So now we have to figure out how to create that village or how to get the support that we need to actually give myself time. The mom, the wife is the person who sets the tone in the house. Because if a woman walks into the house and she walks like this, oh my gosh, I had this amazing day and everything is great. The whole family is cheering. The whole family is happy. If the mom walks into the house, I'm exhausted. I can't believe this thing. This person cut me off and I can't believe like this laundry is piled up. The whole family can feel it. If a husband comes in, and he's in that mood, he's just usually going to go say something and he's going to go and lock himself in the room. So the whole family doesn't feel it as much, but we are the emotional creatures. Our emotions go far and wide. We get to choose what do I spread? Do I like, do I spread like this loving, kind energy or do I spread this frazzled energy, which like I said, current world is much more set on the frazzled energy. We pride ourselves on how busy our days are. Like, oh, look at my calendar. I'm busy. That means I'm worthy. We look for worth in doing things instead of looking for worth in being. Just being, just understanding that us just being is enough. No matter we build, if we build the second business, if we don't, what kind of a parent I want to be? Like, do I want to be a parent that my kids look at and say, I want to be a mom because my mom is so kind and she's so passionate about what she does. And that's what I want to imitate. Versus looking at a relationship and saying, oh my gosh, my parents are fighting all the time. My mom is frazzled. She's so unhappy because of now they might not want to get married necessarily. My daughter wants to be a relationship coach to some degree <laughs> because she sees what I do and she's very inspired. It's so true. They watch everything that we do. And especially as women, we have that power over the emotions, happy wife, happy life. And it, it, there's something to the saying that the energy that we bring into it. And so it really is about first regulating where we're at. Our first one is what podcast resource has helped you with your business and being a busy mom? So one that actually inspires me the most is maybe not parenting, but a podcast. It's the Empowered Wife podcast by Laura Doyle. So the person I was trained with and certified with, and it's so inspiring to learn all the different stories that women have gone through to save their marriages, to save their families. And mine is one of them in there. <laughs> I'm excited to hear more about this and to really get, dive into really, I, I love how you, you talk about 
the empowering of the mom to be able to do this. This doesn't necessarily have to be that your husband or spouse does these things, but that you can start with yourself being comfortable with yourself and the way you're approaching things to see where things go. And I love that so much. That leads us into number two, because we want to talk about joy. And so we want to know some of the things you do as a family that brings joy to you guys. I want to give more ideas out there. We love our trampoline in the backyard that my husband put in, in the ground. We love doing parkour and we love doing Spartan races. Last weekend or two weeks ago, we did a Spartan race in Big Bear, our whole family. My husband and I ran together and our kids did a separate race for kids. They were doing obstacles and they just feel so accomplished when they do that. It's not about winning, it's about finishing. Is this Spartan race? Spartan race, it's kind of like a American Ninja Warrior style okay. with a much lower level. You ran and then you do obstacles. That sounds like so much fun. Big Bear is a great place to do that. We do it every year for my birthday. What a great tradition. I love hearing these ideas. I'm getting new ideas all the time by asking this question. Number three for us is the busyness out of it. We moms use that word as a mask. A lot of times we ask, how are you doing? The answers are I'm fine or I'm busy doing blah, blah, blah. I want to throw it out to the speakers out there to either redefine the question, redefine the word or any way to help take that busyness mask away. I think the question is going to be how am I going to be present today? How am I going to create my ideal day? Today is a crazy busy day for me, but it's an amazing day because I get to meet with you. I get to teach my class. Then I get to go to, and notice that I'm saying I get to, everything's I get to versus I have to. I get to go to my daughter's art class. She loves it. So I volunteer. I'm going to go to my son's school because he is doing his declamation day. And then I get to come back and work a little bit more. So it's creating the get to's. And then we'll go with my oldest son, Shukrav Maga because I love spending time one-on-one -on -one with him. It's doing the, those little things where every child see, feels seen and they're not an obstacle. They're actually a joy to be around, to creating those moments where we actually can enjoy those times. I love that because I felt the same way yesterday. I got that comment. I did 10 podcasts yesterday. Even the last one, one of the speakers saw it, she's like, I saw you the last one. You were still so energetic. I'm like, because this is so much fun bringing these conversations together and to really hone in and spotlight each of you to share your messages. It comes down to is being in our genius and find those things that inspire. And then it's not work anymore. It's the get to's. Yes, absolutely. But then leads us into number four, because then we were talking about success and what is success? What is your definition of success? I feel like we've honed in as a society on something, but the more we talk about the realize it, it's such a bigger expanse. And then how do you celebrate it? How I celebrate, I celebrate with my family because my family is it's like my life is my marketing where I can truly have a relationship and home where I'm proud of showing it in the media and just being a true authentic self. When I can go to my son and say, Hey, I just got a new client today. He celebrates with me or my daughter. Oh my gosh, mom, why don't you, we go out to a restaurant and somebody says they have a bad relationship and she's like, mom, can you help them? Where they become a part of my life and I become a part of my husband's life. So it doesn't feel like work. It feels like following a passion and celebrating with my family is one of the biggest things. I love that. Just following your passion and then being able to celebrate. That's awesome. Which then leads us into, we want to inspire the genius in our children as well. So what tips do you have for us to really bring out the genius in our kids? I think instead of focusing so much about what others are doing, like where I live in Orange County, a lot of families are really hyper-focused on competitive sports. We have our kids in sports, but it's very minimal. It's whatever they want to do, or if they don't, we'll just get them there to, for physical fitness. It's focusing on the things they can do versus all the things they can't do. Truly embracing my life. My daughter loves art. We're going to go towards the art and see how she can expand on that versus hyper-focusing that she doesn't play soccer. So it's truly allowing them to be themselves, whoever they want to be. We had conversations with my husband many times that we would allow just whoever they want to be, they can be as long as they have business degree behind it or marketing degree behind it. So they can make a living from what they like to do, not because become a doctor, become an attorney, because that's what makes money, but actually learn how to do business with what you love. And we are running out of time. So we're going to ask you to tell us how we can get a hold of you and any um, free gifts you might have. And then what is your final takeaway for everyone? So I have a, a giveaway that I wanted to share. It's this chat won't work. So if you go back to our post later in the group, you can post it in there because my chat's not working right now. <laughs> that would be great because of what we talked about earlier about the, uh, how do I become more feminine? And it's five mistakes women make trying to get the men's attention and affection. Tells you the mistakes you make and how do we do it instead. So it's invaluable because it's truly eye-opening. Like, I can't believe I've been doing that. I was thinking I was doing the right thing and it was backfiring. So that's my gift, yolacruise.com. 
is where you can find me. I usually have programs, free masterclasses and so on. The third question. What's your takeaway for everyone? My takeaway is it's never too late to have a happy marriage. I love that so much. Thank you so much, Yolo, for coming on today. It's been a pleasure. I have so many notes that I'm about to go over with the audience, but I just want to thank you and just you bring your energy and really giving us a different perspective. And really, I still have the toy, the toy roll in my head because it really is about perspective and what we put on it. We can either be hangry about it or grateful. It is totally up to you. You can choose whatever brings you more joy. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. It's been an honor to be here. And actually, it's just a very enjoyable interview. You're just doing such amazing work. And so wasn't that completely and utterly amazing? Look at my notes. We're going to go through as best as we can with my reading, but we got number one, change now, see, change how we are. It's about communication so that we don't get offended by the actions, right? The toilet paper roll issue, we have a choice in that. And so it's not about changing the other person, it's changing how we look at it and how we talk to each other, which then leads us into that we can agree to disagree because we have those different perspectives for a reason. As Jolo, Yolo was saying, we need to have the masculine perspective and the feminine perspective and gives our children two different ways of looking at things so they can judge for themselves. Which leads us into our takeaway number two is appreciating those differences, that masculine and feminine energies, and that we're bringing them together. And how can we connect those together so we're not suffering from burnout? We're talking about a lot of motherhood. We've been stuck in the masculine. We've forgotten how to do those things. We're about all the doing. So it's time not to make sure that we're going to burn out but that we go to number three, going back to our roots to figure out what brings us back to our feminine. What things did we enjoy doing as a kid? What are the things that we can do more of? Maybe it's dancing, maybe it's art, whatever that might be. It's asking ourselves that exploration question so we can figure out what's going to get us back to those roots. Number four leads us into how do we stop mothering our husbands and become that lover again? And so she gave us some great tips of how we can speak to them differently, how it's not so much a transaction, but that we're regaining that trust with them and actually having those conversations with them. And then that leads us into number five, which is accepting is always what comes first, is accepting what's already in front of us, learning to embrace it rather than trying to change it. And the more that we do that, again, just keep thinking that the toilet paper roll, right? We, we, we just use that in your head as an example to remind us that you have that choice. When we fill our cup, we're able to accept more. So again, back to that self-care, which should be part of number five as well. It's really getting into that self-care. She's talking about is that when we do take care of ourselves and we have that full cup, then we are able to respond to that tantrum. We're able to respond to that type of toilet paper roll and really see that perspective and have that change. I just want to thank Yola for coming on today. It's such a pleasure to have her give me new perspectives. I hope we gave you a few takeaways. Don't feel the overwhelm, pick something to work on today and help have that stronger relationship with your spouse. We'll see you on the next episode. Thank you for joining us in today's episode of the Mama Genius Hub podcast. If you found value in our conversation, please share this episode with another mama who might benefit. Sharing helps us build a supportive community and reach more mamas like you. After all, it's more fun when we do motherhood together. Until next time, stay motivated and continue to pursue your dreams as you shine in your genius.